This is Video Tips 83 by Tubal Cain on the Atlas Lathe Power Feed. Roll them. Howdy, Tubal Cain again. This video is about the power feed that I built for my uh, Atlas Lathe, and it's a retrofit, uh, homemade. But I've had several comments on it. Uh, I've only mentioned it in passing, and uh, this lathe will feature that power feed and explain it to you how I built it and uh, how it works. This is the quick change gearbox on the Atlas Craftsman 12 inch lathe and uh, we're going to zero in here on the carriage feeds. This is a little bit different than a South Bend lathe or a closing, but I don't believe that the engineers at Atlas had ever run a lathe because if you look down here at the very slowest carriage speed is way too fast. It's four thousandths of an inch. Now by a feed, remember that we mean that the carriage will advance, the work will, the tool will advance into the work at the rate of four, a little over four thousandths per revolution of the spindle. It's really way too fast. That's great for roughing cuts, but if you want a real fine finish cut, it doesn't do the job. Notice also that the 120 threads per inch is a is the finest thread. Well that's a lot finer than you're ever going to thread anyway, but uh, as a way of comparison I'm going to show you something else here momentarily. But my way of working around that is uh, what I'm going to show you. This is the quick change gearbox on the closing 12 inch lathe and we're looking at the chart on it and uh, we'll go down to the bottom where the slowest feeds are and uh, we do have 192 threads per inch. That's quite a bit finer than what you would see on the Atlas lathe, but again that's pretty useless for threading because you're never going to thread that fine. But notice how much finer or slower the power feed is and that it is uh, seven ten thousandths and change per revolution. Now that's uh, much much finer or slower than the closing, or the Atlas I should say. This is the quick change gearbox label on the South Bend 9 inch lathe. Notice that the slowest speed for longitudinal feed is, uh, I can't read that last number so I'll go to this one, it's uh, 0 .0016 so that's about one and a half thousandths of an inch feed per revolution. Not quite as slow as the closing. When I use this setup on the Atlas lathe, I have to make sure that the tumblers on the quick change gearbox are in the down position, that is they're disengaged. And that allows you uh, a free movement of the lead screw from the other end. I'm not able to turn it because my other setup is on there. Also you want to run your uh, your feed reverse lever in neutral. Now if you don't have this uh, set up the way I just showed you, what you're trying to do with my power feed would be to run this gearbox backwards, which may be uh, hard on the gears or might damage a gear because we are running the gear ratios exactly backwards for what, from what they are designed. Remember all of the gears on an Atlas lathe are die cast zinc alloy and I forgot what they call it, they have some bogus name that they give it, but they are die cast, they don't have the strength of the cast iron gears that you see on better lathes, so you don't want to abuse the gears. Let's step down to the tailstock end. Okay, here's my contraption, my Rube Goldberg device that I uh, installed here. Oh, it's probably about 10 years ago. Now, you're not going to be able to build uh, anything exactly like this, but you may be able to use this for inspiration for a gearbox or a motor that you're able to acquire on your end. But I've taken the belt guard off temporarily so I can show you this. I am aware of safety. But I've got a pulley mounted on the end of the lead screw. So I'm driving the lead screw from the tailstock end rather than from the headstock end. Now behind the bed we have a uh, geared motor, gearhead motor I guess you'd call it. 
with a pulley on it and then the belt. Kind of dark back there. But this is a very high quality motor and it came off of an NCG Chemtron MIG welder. Now some of the older welders used separate wire feeders that were not integral as we see them on modern Miller and uh, Lincoln welders. So this came off of quite a, a, an older machine that was being scrapped. I believe it's a DC motor because there's a rectifier in the box that I'm going to show you here momentarily. Up on the wall above the lathe and behind it, the lathe is the control box that uh, came on the welder and it, it, it says Chemtron on there as you can see. I'm not sure they're still in business. Notice they're still welding spatter on the box. I'm a bit of a purist and I don't like to modify a lathe or a machine or anything else I own for that matter uh, in any way that I cannot uh, remove from it and leave no traces of, uh, of what I've done to it. So there, most everything is clamped on or I might have had to drill a hole or two but this can be removed if it ever uh, fails or if I would uh, sell the machine. But up here we got the on and off switch. I'm not sure if you can see that the red light came on to remind me to turn this off. It runs rather silently and I have left it on overnight from time to time. But here we have the uh, rheostat, I guess you would call it, or the speed control. I'm not sure if you can hear the motor increase in speed, but admittedly I always use it in the uh, uh, rather low range right here. Again, this was used to drive the wire or feed the wire on a MIG welder. Here we have a reverse. Now don't scold me for reversing it while it's running. So now it's running the opposite direction. Now let's watch the tailstock as I uh, speed it up and reverse it. You know, uh, I, I give an awful lot of detail on uh, some of my videos, perhaps too much, but in the classroom with high school students, everything had to be very short and sweet. I could not go into the details. I did not have the luxury that I have right now. Also, if it's uh, too much for you, you can speed it up. Okay, I'm going to reverse it. I'm going to speed it up way faster. That's the way the Atlas engineers would have set it up, that that would be the slow speed. I hope I'm not too hard on those men because they're long dead, you know. But we can really tune it down. This is a very high quality motor and it seems to have the same torque at all speeds. Not true of many motors. For instance, if you try to rig up an electric drill as your power source, you're going to find that it's very jumpy at the lower speeds and does not have the torque at the lower speeds. I have tried that on various contraptions I've made over the years, thinking I could just use a cheap drill as a power source and was always sorely disappointed. Now I'm not going to make any chips today, nor is the spindle going to revolve, but I want you to watch the carriage move now. As uh, You can already see the lead screw turning, but as I engage the half nut lever, and on a uh, Atlas lathe we have to use the, at the half nut lever, or a split nut lever, and we are feeding toward the headstock. Let me vary the speed slightly to show you. we can really slow it down. Now I don't know what the feed rate is. I just know that uh, as an experienced machinist it's very easy to tell when you have a speed that you want or the finish that you want. And we're more concerned about this for our finishing cuts than what we are for our roughing cuts. Let's reverse it. Very important to remember that when you turn your main spindle motor on and off that this is still moving if you haven't engaged the feeds and if you walk away from the uh, machine to the telephone or whatever it's possible that you could crash the lathe so 
I need to uh, remember that all the time to either disengage this or to turn it off in the yellow control box. Now let's do some uh, crossfeed. There's our crossfeed feeding in. Now I will reverse it and feed out a little bit slower. Remember that if we run all the way to the end here, feeding out on this lathe, and I believe the closing and, and probably some others, you run off the end of the screw and it's a safety mechanism so you don't damage something or break something when you crash the lathe. Now that's not a big problem with us uh, old guys, but I tell you in a high school shop you can't believe the things that can happen. Here's what I mean. I'm going to feed it out manually. Right now we are off the end of the screw. Quite a bit of play there. I need to tighten the gibs. The gibs are, are pretty tight when I'm uh, farther in, but for some reason when I'm way out here it uh, it has loosened up a little bit. And in order to re-engage uh, re that, we push in and then we're engaged again. So that's a little rundown on my power feed. I think now you know why I put the tumblers in the neutral position here so that we're not feeding power into the gearbox. Now the power is coming all the way here because you can see this shaft turning but the gears are not engaged. I hope you enjoy this little uh, video on my uh, uh, Rube Goldberg power feed. This is Tubal Keynes signing out saying so long for now.